Um, I'm very proud to, to introduce for you from Brazil. It's Hitler Senna Chudi. Hello. Uh, Milton Cesar Sousa de Leiter. Something like that. Yes. They come all the way from another world to tell us something which is really another world from what we know or how you do computers in schools. They have a very special and great project to you. show to us and we're very, very happy to have you here. You're welcome. Thank you yes. Well, the presentation will be split in two parts. Milton is from Education Ministry of Brazil, and uh, he'll talk about the political and pedagogical sides of the project. I will focus in the technical and practical stuff. So I'll start the presentation, and then Milton will talk to you. Uh, we will talk about uh, free software in schools uh, that have uh, is been used in Brazil since uh, 97 up to today. Uh, Brazil is a large country. Uh, we are the fifth largest country in the world in geographical area and the fifth most populous country too. Uh, our economy is the tenth largest and you can see we have a lot of towns and habitants there. There is a map, a detailed map of Brazil and here you can see how far we are from home. It's, <laughs> it's very distant. Uh, there is uh, one important thing to say that uh, uh, internet connection is not wide available at Brazil. In the green area of the map, it's where we have more forests, more rainforests. In that area, the cities are too far one from other, and there are not too many big cities. And in these cases, the, the most practical way of getting internet access is over satellite. This is being done, and but uh, the, it's not a big project yet. Uh, these challenges I'll talk about are related to delivering computers to Brazilian schools. We have uh, logistics challenges related to size of Brazil, the number of cities, and uh, <coughs> some, some, some cities and some, some areas, mainly in the north of the country, has uh, no easy access. There are some hair cases then you need to go there by boat. This is a very complicated thing for computers. Power supply, it's uh, a problem for rural areas too. Some schools uh, does, not, does not have electricity. This is very rare, but we do have it. In other hair cases, the school use, uses generators. And it's very common that the, the, there is no much power available. So the power consumption is very critical. We need to find a solution, to deliver a solution that enables more than one kid to use uh, the, the computers but uh, with uh, a limited amount of energy, power. In Brazil, uh, in, again, in the rural areas, it's not easy to find trained professional, people who knows how to install and maintain Linux and Windows machines. This is a challenge because when we are developing the solution, we need to have, we need to have in mind that it, it just work because if it stop working, uh, it will be, uh, maybe 10 days not working until the technical support can get there. So this is very critical for, for us. Actually, as the number of cities, it's, it's very big. We have uh, in Brazil more than 150,000 schools. So to put computers in all schools is something very complicated and, and expensive. We need to find a solution that the seat price, the station price is so low that we can put it on all, every school. In a, in a maintainable way. I'll talk about what's been done now in Brazil, what's its reality, what, we, what has been delivered at, up to this moment to Brazil. We have about 35 million pupils using computers at school, uh, mainly are using free software. Uh, as the project is started in 98, and uh, it started using free software in 2003, there are some remaining computers that do not use it but major of the students uses free software. Uh, this, you can see that the number of computers is different than the number of stations because the solution that's been shown there, it's what we call multi-terminal. It enables you to use one computer for more than one person or student at the same time. I'll talk more about this later. 
you can see this is a, a showroom picture. You can see that uh, even with only one PC, every station is doing different things. You can see because the photo is not good, but there are five keyboards and mice here. And these white boxes are for sound. Every station has sound. This is a USB sound box. You can see uh, outside, but the, the ones they, that we have here are black, but they do the same thing. Well, uh, I'll do a, a brief <coughs> explanation of how does the Mooch terminal <coughs> works. You need a standard PC, a low-end PC. The, the PC the, does not have any special feature. It's a standard PC. You add video cards to it. This is a very strange video card. It is a, a, we developed it, but uh, it will work with any kind of video card. Does it not need to be this? The advantage of this one is that you have four outputs for one PCI slot, but any video card will work. Also, there is software that controls the multi-station environment that makes it possible to be easy to use it. Then you add it to a PC and you able add monitors, keyboards and mice and you are ready to use it. This bot happened less than 60 days ago. Uh, these were bought for multi-terminal stations. The Education Ministry of Brazil bought 7,000 computers each computer with a printer and five stations for each computer. This picture was taken in a rural school of Brazil during their installation. They are, they're, they're actually there are five screens. This is a printer, it's not, you, can, you cannot see very clearly. And there are five of these audio hubs, the same as you have here. Actually, they hide inside of uh, the hardware, inside that box is, a, is a, exactly the same, that one. The box here is different because it's, it's smaller, it's more easy to, to bring to, to you. But in the inside is exactly the same. The project cost to Brazilian government this amount in euro. As the project happened 60 days ago, more or less, the exchange rates were different. I made the conversion yesterday, so this may not reflect the exact reality when it was uh, bought by Brazilian government. But this price includes this 7,000 kits of like this. And uh, there is one factor that is critical, that is 36 months of on-site warranty. If a mouse stops working in the deep rainforest, the, the company who made the auction needs to go there just to replace the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> this is very expensive because the, the number of cities is very huge. For this project, we have at least one of these kits for each city, and some city has more than one. But at least one of these for each city. So this is very complicated. This, this increases a lot the, the station price. 